we have a question about playing and streaming games at 1080p high detail for three years. With a roughly $1,500 or 1,500 euro budget, mm -hmm. what is the best hardware you can get and what would you recommend if that is the goal? Well, that's going to depend upon, are you doing esports games or AAA games? And what your idea of amazing performance is. And the reason I say that is because some people think that 1080p 60 frame per second average is great, and others think 1080p 60 frame per second 1% low is great. And those are sometimes two very, very, very different goals. If you want a steady, smooth 60 frame per second, you need way more hardware than if you just want an average. A lot of things will do average, but they'll be dipping down into 20 and 30 frame per second during the, the very times you need the performance the most when there's a lot of stuff going on on screen. Having said that, what would I recommend? Well, off the top of my head, an eight core 16 thread chip, something like an i7-10700 or 10700K. Okay. I'm not married to the K chip versus non-K chip. If they're within 20 or $30 a piece, sure, get the K chip. But if they're $100 apart, get the non-K chip. The, the true differences are minor. The non-K chip has an out-of-the-box all-core turbo of 4.6. The K chip is 4.7. Big deal. Yeah, the K chip can be overclocked to 5 gigahertz and beyond. But then you're spending expensive cooling, expensive motherboard, expensive for 5% for difference. It's very... For 1080p... It, for streaming, it doesn't matter. But the eight cores will ensure that you can play games for the next three years at 1080p and still have enough to stream with. Yes, we're using GPU encoding. We're not using X264 encoding because that'd be dumb. But even then, OBS takes something. Voice command takes something. Your second browser window, your second monitor for streaming, all of that takes something. And so even if you believe that the games you're going to play only need six cores, you'll want those two extra cores to smooth everything out for the next three years. I'd love to say more, but with a $1,500 budget, we don't really have room for it. Things like motherboards, cases, power supplies, a 650 to 750 watt uh, power supply can be had in the $75 range. This is the sort of system that'd be reasonable to put into a $100 case. Things like glass and RGB are completely preference-oriented. Some people prefer a Mesh FIC blackout build. Some people mm -hmm. prefer a TD500 Mesh all RGB bling build. That is completely up to you. Both of those cases are about $100. Both of them are perfectly reasonable. Micro ATX full-size doesn't really matter, but do get a Z-Series board if you're building something like this because if you're going with an i7, you go with a Z-Series. 32 Two gigs, gigs of, of RAM, RAM, not even a question. 32 gigabytes, absolutely 120%. That's that's a no-brainer. They're currently, in fact, as we're recording this today, $99. Oh, they're back down? So okay. that's an easy decision. We'll buy it before they go back up to, what, 120 or something? Yeah, do you know what his biggest problem's going to be? Video cards. I'd, I was just thinking that. Because you got storage, too. Well, storage. But storage is fairly easy. One terabyte premium NVMe storage, 120 bucks. A yeah. Data SX 8200 Pro, at least in the United States, 120 bucks. That's a no-brainer. Now, in Europe and other places, it's going to be a different selection, but roughly that price point. Video card for 1080p, 3060 Ti, or the upcoming 6700 XT, which is supposed to be about 400 dollars. But 400 dollars, maybe 450 for one of the aftermarket cards, is about where you should be. I think the 3060 Ti is an awesome three-year 1080p card. We recently did a video about that. We, we tested did. 10 games. Now we've done 1080p and 1440p testing, and it does 1440p today okay, but the specific question that was asked here was the next three, three years. years. Exactly. So something in that price range, if you go used, a comparable card would either be a 2080 Super or a 2080 Ti, Ti. if you can get one under $500. A $1,500 build mm -hmm. with a $500 budget for a video card, a $300 budget for the CPU, a $200 budget for case and power supply, $100 for the RAM, $100 for the storage, um, yep, $150 to $200 for the motherboard. You're going to need another 50 ish dollars, like a Scythe Mugen 5 or some mid range six heat pipe direct contact cooler. Mm -hmm. $50 for the cooler, keyboard, mouse, etc. You're at $1,500 plus or minus 
you know, flavor choices. Exactly. So that's going to get you a good value for the money that will let you play and stream games for the next three years at 1080p, with the exception that in the last year of those three years, there may be some new AAA games that. two ish years from now that will start to require some compromises as those parts age. But it'll be pretty good. And of course, esports games. I mean, if you want to play Apex Legends, Overwatch, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, three years easy on those games for multiplayer. Do you have anything to add? Mm -mm. No, you nailed it. Don't buy a six score chip, don't go 16 gigs of RAM, and don't think that a older video card is going to cut it for the next three years. <laughs>